Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. Dopamine, chemically speaking, is really nothing special. There's no apparent magic to the molecule itself. Just a simple aromatic compound on a planet with countless similar chemicals. It's basically benzene with feet and a tail. The mysterious thing is why dopamine is so important to not just human brain function, but to just about every other animal with a nervous system. You'll hear it described as the pleasure neurotransmitter, released in the brain during the best of times to supply a warm rush of the greatest feeling in the world. The body says, remember this, this was good. Do this again and do this again soon. What do we have to do to do this again? Your body wants you to be an addict. Our body wants us jonesing for more, all the time, whatever it takes for another hit of dopamine. From cockroaches to aardvarks to the Queen of England, dopamine is at the heart of the biochemistry driving behavior. 3,4-dihydroxyphenethylamine, the chemical dopamine, emerged on the planet Earth as a neurotransmitter back in the earliest appearance of the nervous system in the Cambrian period over 500 million years ago. Dopamine functions as a neurotransmitter in vertebrates, arthropods, mollusks, and several types of worm. If this is true, why can't we just pull into the gas and sip and grab a dopamine-loaded energy drink or a low-carb snack bar? Well, it turns out the body has already figured out this trick and develop the blood-brain barrier to filter out dopamine from food. Bananas, avocados, and chocolate are loaded with dopamine. But your body wants your brain to make it all by itself. All the banana splits in the world won't give you the real rush. Even a massive horse pill of dopamine itself won't make you feel the slightest less blue. No free lunch when it comes to biology. At least in this case, we've got to work for our dopamine. Human dopamine has to be homemade in the brain. The way it's made in the nervous system can vary a bit depending on the type of organism. There are primarily two pathways, and the precursor of both is an amino acid called tyrosine. The first pathway starts with a decarboxylation or removal of an acid group from tyrosine by an enzyme called tyrosine decarboxylase to produce tyramine, which is then hydroxylated by monophenol hydroxylase to generate dopamine. The second pathway starts with the hydroxylation of tyrosine by tyrosine hydroxylase to produce levodopa, which is then decarboxylated by dopa decarboxylase to produce dopamine. Anticipation of reward is what gets the process into gear. Many addictive drugs produce an increase in reward-related dopamine activity. Stimulants such as nicotine, cocaine, and methamphetamine promote heightened levels of the stuff. This appears to be the primary factor in causing addiction. When people addicted to stimulants go through withdrawal, accompanied by reduced levels of dopamine, they experience craving, an intense desire for the drug characterized by irritability, restlessness, and other hyperarousal symptoms. More, more, more. Then, as soon as the brain finally gets some dopamine, the body is in a hurry to take it right away. It's almost as though nature doesn't want us to be happy all the time. Dopamine is quickly broken down into the inactive metabolites by a set of enzymes, monoamine oxidase, which is also found in the brain. Not only are we always chasing dopamine, if we get too low or even too high, very bad things can happen to the mind and the body. Parkinson's disease, restless leg syndrome, and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, are associated with low dopamine in the brain. Abnormalities in dopaminergic neurotransmission also occur in chronic pain conditions, including burning mouth syndrome and fibromyalgia. So if dopamine gets too low, we get pain and Parkinson's disease. What happens if the brain is just flooded with dopamine? It turns out the result is peculiar and very consistent among patients. Sky-high levels of dopamine are accompanied by hallucinations and other symptoms of schizophrenia. This realization led to the dopamine hypothesis of schizophrenia, postulating that schizophrenia is largely caused by hyperactivity in the brain dopamine system. 
this theory gained additional support from the observation that psychotic symptoms were often intensified by dopamine-enhancing stimulants, such as methamphetamine. Researchers also realized these drugs could even produce psychosis in healthy people if taken in large enough doses. Most antipsychotic drugs used to treat these intense mental and sensory disturbances are dopamine antagonists acting to reduce dopamine activity. How could one simple chemical wreak so much havoc? And why is dopamine the keystone in the neurochemistry of motivation, passion, pleasure, and reward? Are we controlling the chemicals, or are the chemicals controlling us? And when I say us, I don't just mean humans. I mean most organisms. Dopamine is running around the brains of everything from orangutans to dung beetles. The muscles even create their own dopamine, but they use it to make glue to stick to rocks and boat holes. Dopamine isn't the only chemical like this. There are a host of chemical compounds shared by diverse and disparate species. Sometimes different animals will use the same chemical for an entirely different biochemical task. Same building blocks, just with different builders. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.